Blue here at Particle Measuring Systems. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by David Kranz. David is our National Sales Manager at PMS for the Life Science Division and an instructor at PDA Training Headquarters for over 17 years. We are going to talk about facilit our facility monitoring system and how we meet the needs of our customer processes. David, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Blue. How are you today? I'm really good. Thank you for asking. So my first question is, when a customer approaches you about a monitoring system, what is the first thing that you ask? The first thing we need to do is to understand the customer's process. And the first step to that is understand the product that they're filling or producing in those areas they want to monitor. As you know, sometimes the products are, or we have a wide variety, our customers of products um, that they're producing. Some are just basic products, no effect on operators. Others like uh, cancer drugs, the cytotoxins or radiopharmaceuticals uh, can be a danger to operators in those areas. Uh, so we have to take a lot of precautions with that. Um, the second thing we have to understand is the equipment or machines or devices that are in the area that they want monitored. Um, some of those options are things like fill lines, bio safety cabinets um, that need to be monitored uh, that are all different grades. Um, sometimes fill machines have uh, isolators on them. So that's a full grade A and it could be surrounded by a grade C area, easy to operate. Um, but some fill machines and, and the last time I was at the PDA in Bethesda, a lot of fill machines, probably about 70% in the US are still just in a room surrounded maybe by a curtain or just left open in a room and the grade B area around it or grade A area around it. So all these things we have to take into account when we're um, discussing monitoring systems. And the last thing to understand in the process is how they clean or sterilize the area. What effect that may have on the sensors that we choose to put in those areas. Okay, so after knowing the customer's process, what other things are required? So we have to look at things like the size of the area, the room grades. So keep in mind pharmaceutical manufacturing has four grades, A, B, C, and D. Um, we have to understand which areas they want to do maybe with fixed sensors, which areas they're going to do with portables. We're going to have to understand um, what their IT structure is. Um, and then, of course, we work with the customer on getting their risk assessment straightened out. Um, and what I mean by that, you know, when I started 18 years ago, inspectors didn't really ask about risk assessments uh, with point locations or sensor locations. Now it's critical that our customers have risk assessments, a formal document outlining why they chose these locations. So we can work with them. And of course our advisory group, um, they're experts at it. Um, so we can assist with, with those type things. Um, you know, other things we have to, with the IT structure, we have to understand where the data, they may want the data uh, to be transferred, um, whether it's some formal historian they want to go to, or they could be completely happy with our Facility Pro software. Got it. And after you have answers about your client's building area, how do you proceed? Well, then we get into the nitty gritty, as I call it. We start to discuss the different options we have for sensors. Um, you know, for instance, if the cleaning process involves VHP, well, we have a, a couple of, of particle sensors that are VHP resistant. Uh, even now we have a particle sensor that's VHP resistant with a self-contained pump. Um, so we, we have to look at all those different options, whether we have can put the infrastructure in for a central vacuum, um, or we have to go with the self-contained pumps. Um, these are things that we'll start to answer with the customer. Um, and as you know, the Facility Pro system 
with the wide variety of processors and modules and, and the sensors we have is extremely flexible, which makes it easy for me <laughs> to help the customer choose the right system. Do you need anything else to proceed? Yeah, the last step usually is to think about uh, future expansion and timeframes. Um, future expansion meaning a lot of uh, contract manufacturers we deal with or even the multinational companies, um, they're usually talking about some kind of expansion down the road if their product takes off. Um, so we want to think about that, you know, so when you start setting up uh, a system and you start thinking about expansion, do I have a large enough vacuum system that could handle additional sensors and even not thinking about expansion, sometimes customers will change. OK, I may have eight locations today. By the time we start with the project, it may grow to nine or ten with some minor changes. So think about that expansion because you don't want to buy a vacuum pump, throw it away in five years and buy a larger one uh, when buying a larger one may be just a couple hundred dollars right now. Um, so those type things, any additional modules, things like that, that can be installed and ready to go and additional wiring, um, running of tubing, stuff like that. Um, and when I, the other thing is time frame, uh, which is important because a lot of our customers have limited shutdowns or times we can get into these clean rooms or these clean areas to do the work we need to. So it's very important to really put together a solid schedule um, because a lot of times we may only have one week in the in the clean room to get everything installed. So we have to get everything set up scheduled properly so things arrive on time. We have our project managers, the installation people, uh, everybody right on schedule to make it happen. Super. Thank you so much for your time today, David. Yeah, it's always a good thing to chat with you. Have a good one. Stay safe. You too.